Recently, Skylum dropped the latest update for Luminar Neo, version 1.14.0. It includes the newest tool, Neon and Glow, as well as some updates to some other tools such as the Panorama and the Blur tool. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. In this video, I'll show you what's new in version 1.14.0 and what to expect. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we dig into the list of everything that's new, I wanted to just show you an example of what the Neon and Glow tool can do. I'm seeing this kind of example all over the internet, and unfortunately, it's not the best use of this tool. There are actually some really cool things that you can do with this tool. So if you're in the camp of it's too gimmicky, stick around. I'll show you some better ways to use it that are a little bit more subtle. Okay, now it's time to take a look at what's new in version 1.14.0. We've already talked about the Neon and Glow tool. That's the major update that's been added to Luminar Neo with this version. The next thing is the Blur tool has already received a major upgrade. They've added a fourth option called Tilt Shift, and it replicates the style of using that kind of lens. In addition, you'll see improved stitching with the panorama extension, better object selection with the background removal extension, and some improved performance for the Bokeh AI tool and the erase tool. If you use a Mac computer, it's also worth noting that Luminar Neo is now compatible with the latest Mac OS update, Sonoma. And finally, you'll see some improvements when syncing edits and adjustments from one image to another, as well as many bug fixes. Let's hop over to Luminar Neo and take a look at some of these items. The first thing I want to show you is the addition to the Blur tool. Now when you open it, you'll see four options, the newest being Tilt Shift. So let's see how it works. I'm going to select Tilt Shift and just drag the amount up. As you can see, it creates a kind of miniature look, especially when you're working on a scene that you've photographed from a higher camera angle looking down. City scenes like this work really well with this kind of tool. You can also adjust the blur center, like so, to decide which parts are going to be sharp and how much the blur fades, and so on. Give this one a try on different kinds of images because you can see that really what it's doing is just blurring two edges of the image. You can also rotate it if need be so you can do something on a diagonal. See what you can come up with using this new blur tool. Next, let's take a look at Neon and Glow. You'll find it in the creative section right above the blur tool. When you open it, you'll see there are three options, Neon, glow, and of course, masking, as per usual. Let's try neon first. To activate the tool, just drag the amount slider up, and you'll see it analyze your image to find the subject. The sliders below will allow you to adjust various different settings as far as how large the neon is, how much it glows, and the color. Whiteness allows you to go from a white neon glow too highly saturated, so you can control the amount and the color of your neon glow. If you're not happy with the subject selected, you can just click Refine Object, and then you can either erase or add in parts. For example, if I don't want to show this bump in her head, I can smooth it out. Or if I want to draw something up here, you'll see the glow will go around that area now. Let's turn off neon and try glow. When you go to the glow tab, now you have two more options, inner and outer. If you apply an outer glow, you'll see exactly that appear. Once again, you have all the same options. You can adjust the color, the amount of saturation using the whiteness slider, the size of the glow, and so on. This one is actually a great example of how you can use this tool more subtly. So let's say I just want to separate her a bit from the background, which is very dark. So I'm going to use pure white, so no color, make it a little bit smaller, 
and just lower the amount. So I want just a subtle glow, maybe a larger glow. I just want a subtle glow around her so that she's not blending in to the background. Can you see that? If I want a little bit of color, I would probably go and choose something orange that's going to blend in well with the background itself, like that. Can you see how this might be useful in some situations? Let's take a look at Inner Glow. This is another one that I haven't found a lot of use for yet. It's all the same options once more. You can do things like add color. So if I wanted to adjust her skin tone, for example, I could do that and just add a subtle brightness. You'll also notice that there's another option at the bottom that says sparkles. When you drag it up, you literally get that over top of the image, sparkles. Notice that there are some coming over across her face because we've applied it to the inner glow. If we turn the sparkles off, go to outer glow, you can apply the sparkles to the outside instead. I could see applying this on select images, maybe uh, children's portraits, where if you want to create a fairy or magical fantasy type of look, it's kind of fun. I just want to take a quick pause to remind you to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel, remembering to hit that notifications button so you don't miss any new videos that we post. And please share the video with all your photography friends. It helps us to help more people and to grow our channel. Let me show you how I applied this tool to an actual portrait that I just completed. I created this image for this lady who is a professional wrestler. And I found that I liked what was happening in the background, but she was kind of blending in a little bit too much to the mat. So I used the outer glow and used a red color just to separate her a little bit from the floor. See the difference it's making to separate her from the background? Then in the final image, I used Photoshop to add some smoke and special effects. That's not something you can currently do inside of Luminar Neo, but it might one day, so I'm eager to see where Skylum takes it. In this image of the flower, I actually applied the Neon and Glow tool twice. The first one I applied just to the center of the flower using the inner glow. And you can see that the object itself, if I click on draw, is just the very center of the flower. So I applied a yellow color to give it more punch. Then I applied the tool a second time using the outer glow and applied some of the sparkles, just for fun. Here you can see the faux before and after. I urge you to try to restrain yourself and not get carried away using this tool. Have fun with it, experiment, but don't use it on everything. Here's another quick example of how I used the Neon and Glow tool to turn on the headlights of this car. You can also use the Magic Light AI extension, but when you do so, it applies a starburst to the light sources, not what I wanted here. So this is a great option for just turning on the lights. Similarly, on this scenic image, I used it to enhance and brighten the fog a little bit. See how that works? And all I did was paint it exactly where I wanted it using the Furfine object brush. In this final example, I did use the neon portion of the tool. You can see that I've actually applied it three times. If I go back to the first version, you can see that I used it to create red tail lights from the moving cars. See if you can use your powers of deduction to figure out how I did this and try and replicate it on an image of your own. In the second application of the tool, I applied headlights on the other side. And finally, I did a neon glow around the sign. Remember to use the refined object brushes to get the outline exactly where you want it. Let me ask you this. Have I given you some things to think about in regards to the neon and glow tool? Did your opinion of it shift a little bit perhaps? Let me know in the comment area below if you're gonna give it a try now. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want a more extensive learning experience, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You get over 16 hours of video and my raw files to practice with. 
You can also stay here on YouTube and watch another video by clicking one on the screen now. Until next time, take care, we'll see you soon.